Our brains are busier than they've ever been before. They contain more information than at any other point in human history. And our lives are filled with constant interruptions and distractions. Stress is at an all time high. And stress not only impacts on our mental well-being, it can have a knock on effect to our physical health too. The busy modern world we live in can leave many of us feeling anxious, frazzled or burnt out. And there are a lot of things that we can do to support our mental well-being, including taking regular exercise and connecting with others. But today I want to have a look at mindfulness and how embracing mindfulness can help you to deal with the busy modern world we live in. I will put links to any resources in the description under this video and as always if you do enjoy it don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications when we release more. So mindfulness has been entwined with ancient eastern religions such as Buddhism for millennia. I will today be focusing on secular mindfulness which does include some of the traditions without the religious and cultural aspects. So what is mindfulness? Mindfulness is the practice of paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present moment and non-judgmentally. Now I know what some of you are thinking, well you, I do pay attention, I pay attention all the time. But just for a moment consider, how many other things have you been thinking about since this video started? Maybe you've thought about what you're going to cook for your dinner tonight or the appointment you're yet to make. Perhaps you've received a text message or email and you've glanced at it and thought, I'll respond to that when this video is over. If you're honest, most of you will have thought of at least one other thing. Don't worry, I don't take it personally. The world that we live in encourages us to be constantly on edge and aware for the next interruption or communication or activity that we've got to do. This leaves many of us feeling stressed. Now stress is an important physiological reaction and it can save our lives. But humans experience more stress now than we have ever experienced. Our ancient ancestors would have experienced short periods of stress, say when they were chasing a prey or being chased by a predator or enemy, but that stress would have ended at some point. Whereas in the modern world, it's difficult to get away from the stresses and strains. Mindfulness can help us to deal with these stresses and strains and the feeling of being overwhelmed and help to bring your thoughts into the present moment. There has been much interest into the clinical applications of mindfulness and whilst clinical research is still in relative infancy, there are a few things that we know it can do to us. So just like physical exercise can strengthen and tone our skeletal muscles, regular mindful exercises may help to tone our brains. So neuroscientists suggest that regular practicing of mindfulness for eight weeks or more can make the hippocampus thicker. The hippocampus is an area of the brain that's responsible for memory and learning. It's also been shown to make the prefrontal cortex thicker. This area of the brain is responsible for planning, problem solving and regulating emotions. And it's also been shown that after practicing mindfulness, the amygdala can become smaller. The amygdala is the part of the brain that's responsible for our stress response. So based on these changes, it's thought that mindfulness can help to improve memory, learning, concentration and attention whilst reducing stress and anxiety. It has been suggested that the benefits of regular mindfulness can stretch beyond just our mental health and may help with physical symptoms too. So it's thought that mindfulness may help to reduce pain and potentially reduce blood pressure. More research does still need to be done into these areas. It is worth noting that the NHS does recognise and recommend mindfulness, particularly for people who've experienced three or more bouts of depression. 
If you have experienced several bouts of depression in the past, it is worth talking to your healthcare provider as you may be able to get a referral for my to mindfulness-based cognitive therapies, which can be really useful for people with depression. So how do you practice mindfulness? So you don't need any special equipment and you don't necessarily need any special training. There are plenty of free online resources with simple exercises that you can implement at just about any time of the day. Mindfulness is a skill and just like any skill, it does require practice. But the more you practice it, the easier it becomes. And even if you practice your mindfulness poorly on occasion, the fact that you're trying can still have an impact on your mental well-being. I'm not a mindful practitioner, but I am an enthusiastic participant. Now, there are a lot of free resources if you want to explore mindfulness and how you may be able to adopt it into your day. But depending upon the size of your budget, there are some fantastic books, online courses and physical courses that you can take. These can be really useful, particularly if you find the act of being mindful difficult. So if you find that your mind is regularly wandering, these short courses can help to introduce mindful practices into your everyday. You can practice mindfulness just about anywhere. The more practiced you get, the more you'll find you're doing it without even realizing you're doing it. So for instance, I often find myself having a few mindful minutes if I'm on public transport, or even if I'm in the queue at the bank. A common exercise that's used to help introduce people to mindfulness is the raisin exercise. So this involves taking one raisin and you'll spend about three to five minutes consuming that raisin. Because throughout the exercise, you will be encouraged to involve all of your senses and to connect in the present moment with that raisin. So you'll be encouraged to look at it, to feel it, to smell it, to slowly taste it. You'll be encouraged to keep your full attention on that raisin, what you notice about that raisin and how it makes you feel particularly when you're tasting it. It can take a while to learn to be fully mindful. And there will be some days where your mindfulness exercises are easier than others, just like with physical exercise. But as I said before, even when you don't quite fully achieve mindfulness, just the act of trying to be more mindful can have positive benefits. Mindfulness is a useful tool that can be used alongside many other therapies, treatments, medications and supplements. It is recognised by the NHS and there are plenty of brilliant mindful practitioners out there. Depending upon the size of your budget and how much time you've got, there are a lot of ways that you can look at it, embracing mindfulness to help you with your mental health in the busy, busy world we live in. If you'd like to read more about mindfulness or other ways to help support your mental well-being, then check out the resources in the description below. And as always, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications when we release more.